Euzubillahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atiyullah, atiyur Rasul, ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukalaji sudaifu, miskin, uzalim, jahad. And but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. InshaAllah Allah dress us on this holy weekend for the celebration of the birth of Imam Ali salam and that with our good deeds and good character and good actions that we draw near to Allah's Divinely Presence and the presence and love and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad his holy companions and holy Ahlul Bayt and family. And that Imam Ali salam be pleased with us and his holy Nazar salam to be upon us, our families and our communities inshaAllah. We talked uh, a lot last week, let's go over some of the recap and some of the information that was covered so that when we see it in the comments that uh, what people are understanding, what people are absorbing inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah When we talk about signs on the horizon, is that the horizon in our heart? With the signs within yourself and the signs upon the horizon means that the sign on the outside, that the inner heart has its horizon means the inner reflection and upon the horizon means the outer world. That a reality comes within a person but the realities also should be prevalent or evidenced in our dunya that you see the signs with your physical eyes. Because if everything was only spiritual then it would be very hard to explain to people because each has their own spiritual experience. So for the example of guidance with the sun and the moon that we talked about, Allah is giving the example now. When someone says, you don't need a shaykh and then we come back and say, well then you don't need the moon. So why did our Lord put a moon? They say, oh it's like an ornament and for design? No, Allah say, I didn't create this creation as a playing, as a joke, as an entertainment. But they're signs for the believer. So everything that they're teaching, there's an external reality that's visible. If we have eyes to see, look at the moon, it's following the sun. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It doesn't change and keep going to different planets and different stars and every day changing its direction and who it wants to follow, doesn't want to follow. Allah describes that it follows like a ship on a course. And then when we look on the outside we begin to see, so what's the importance of that moon? Means that moon is the one reflecting the light of the sun upon this earth, right? Because we're growing, vegetation is growing, everything is, is blossoming from moonlight. If it required full sunlight then it would have to be burned. So the moon sends a light at a frequency and uh, at a warmth that allows things to grow. So then the servant begins to study the importance of the moon and lunation and the moon tajalli and farmers who follow the moon cycle and they call farmers almanac because they needed it for growing. They needed to know when to plant their seeds and the importance of how it grows and how the plants are breathing with sunlight, with moonlight. 
So all of these realities Allah put in that so that His servants would one day look and see the example. Oh this guy is not just making this up, Allah's showing us. You have to follow, you have to follow what? A planet? No, you follow the sun, it means you follow the light, you follow that which is eternal. So the visible and what we see with our eyes then has to have an immense reality for guidance and spirituality. Then the servant once they've understood the outside they begin to look inside and say, oh my heart has that same sun and my heart should be illuminated, illuminated and that my head is a moon and it should reflect what's in my heart, not just speak from itself but it should be emptied and it should be reflecting from the heart. So a talking head just from its own brain is of no value to us. But a head that shut off and learned how to connect with its heart then it luminous, it takes the inspiration of the heart and the heart then overtakes the ears, the eyes, the tongue and begins to use the head. So the head has to submit. So then that becomes all of these teachings that Allah wants and this is one example, many examples. That whatever the shaykhs are teaching, whatever Prophet brought of inner deep realities, much of which can be explained from what we see outside of us. So the outside and the inside has a lesson and a teaching for us inshaAllah. Mm, as salaamu alaykum shaykh. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Shaykh, I'm from the Qadri yeah. tariqah and I love and respect all tariqahs and, and awliya Allah and I respect, I very much respect what you do for the ummah. May Allah keep blessing you. Bless um, you. What advice would you give a 21-year-old Qadri student? Same we give to any 21-year-old is to follow the way. The Qadri, Naqshbandi, it's all Muhammadi, everything is based on Sayyidina Muhammad So follow the haqqaiqs and the reality and, and reach to that fountain, to that love, to the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad And uh, most important is to have a, a living guide that uh, is guiding us to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad So like anything else in life just make sure that you, you follow a living guide in life. If you want to follow this guidance then alhamdulillah you're free to follow the guidance, follow the teachings, build the, the love within the heart and uh, this is the most important that people will be with whom they love. Means that's what we talked about last night, last, last weekend. So that's an immense subject that hopefully people, it triggered something within their understanding. There it is a effort on this dunya by shaitan, nothing is random. You know in 1960s or 50s shaitans came out and decided that was going to start. They would break the relationship between child and parent. And they began to teach people to put your children in a room, let him yell and scream and shut the door. They broke the madad, they broke the tawakkul, they broke the reliance and the natural need for the child to the parent because for that child the parent is Allah, is the Divine for them. The parent sustains them, feeds them, nourishes them. Means their whole tawakkul and their whole reliance is on the parent. And the natural order in which Prophet brought for us is you have to nourish that relationship. And that child is going to bond with you, love you, rely upon you as you rely upon Allah So there was a concerted effort to break that. And why? Because the next phase is that they would go into the school systems. And in the school system since they broke the relationship they would now listen to other people for guidance because they have no empathy, no connection in their heart, no reliance upon their parent. They have actual anger and disconnection to the parents 
So as a result their heart are fresh for new ideas and uh, Allah protect these children for what they're learning in these systems and by who is teaching these systems. And then they want to reorient them into different directions and, and different understandings. And as a result by the time they enter college they're completely different, different creatures. And then look at the situation we have now. So it was, a, it was patiently maneuvered. So don't think anything is random. Everyone has to believe that shaitan has a plan and, and he has patiently moved his plan along. We didn't get here by accident. We didn't get to this point in our lives in the Western world by accident. Shaitan has purposefully planned each step. So then the believer has to believe and wake up. When they wake up and understand that love is the essential element, you have to love your guide and you have to love with your heart. It's not ishq, it's not passion, it's not sort of you know inappropriate, it's love and reverence. It's the love that you have for something holier than yourself and that you treat it with respect, you treat it with a holiness because that's your reverence that you want to show Allah There has to be something holier than me so that I can practice this love I have for Allah And when we develop that character and we develop that relationship Allah is then looking and saying, oh Farin, good you're getting it. You know, you've got to treat somebody with the reverence and respect and that's a symbol of the heaven. So you find someone more pious than yourself, someone who symbolizes the heavens for you, you respect them. And if they teach about Sayyidina Muhammad then you respect them. And that builds that love, that builds a reliance on your heart. Just like the child, that was the whole example of that talk and, and that weekend was important because this whole tawakkul, this whole process of reaching towards these realities is that you have to build that reliance, build that trust, build within your heart. As a result your heart will bond and that bond is important. That's the bond that, that opens the fires, the emanations, that opens the realities and that you'll be with whom you love and whom you love will be with you. And that's what we call the madad and it's so simple it's just by the act of, of reverence and love within the heart. Then they nourish that by meditating and contemplating. So I don't understand why when we say like do like this and then you get 10 questions, it's like that, it's exactly like this, it's like this, it's, it's very simple. Don't make it so, so complicated. That when you have a reverence and love you close your eyes and, and you feel that reverence that you're with me now and guide me and teach me. And for women we said before it's very obvious you have to have the reverence for the shaykh who's teaching you and talking to you now. But when you want to connect your heart there's more comfort in visualizing Haja Amina who's big awliyaullah and that you visualize her presence and that you connect with her heart and ask that she dress you and that keep your love and respect for the shaykh who's teaching you. So he's feeding you these knowledges and you're connecting your heart and asking for her spiritual dress, for the men to ask for the spiritual dress of the shaykh. That bond of, of connection grows by this muhabbat and, and reverence because the more, more appropriate word would be a reverence, to have a respect. And with that respect you learn your manners, you learn your good character and with that good character Allah begins to teach the servant. And when Allah teaches through good character, good manners, they learn the ways of Allah right? So what, what we call the natural law which is the sharia of Allah because the one whom has what we described humility, whom has modesty. Allah begins to grant them faith and then the two friends of faith always accompany them, humility and modesty. So when you're building your faith you have humility and modesty and Allah is now teaching you sharia that don't do that, 
do like this, don't be like that, be like this. And that becomes the way and the way is built based on good character. So we're not a class in which to sit and keep you know bombarding the head and trying to convince people's heads and get them to memorize things through their heads. But uh, it's a way of the heart, the way of, of good deeds and good actions inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah With all the corruption going on in these schools, it's hard for parents to trust our children in anything but an Islamic school. But they are expensive, should we create our own? Or should we rely on spiritual teachings to save them from these Western schools who are increasingly, <laughs> increasingly satanic agenda based? Yeah, you have to, you know, be careful. We all understand what we're talking about but if you're too descriptive, they're gonna cut these channels off and YouTube off will cut us off. So it's just everyone knows what they're teaching, where they're teaching it and this is a, a great battle for the souls of people. So it's a matter of uh, having a very strong bond with the children, continuously teaching that we don't believe those things and we, we raise the children. But uh, their system is based on taking the mother out of the home, not having that love, not having that affection and before you know it somebody else is raising the children. So it's best on whatever people can do is to raise your children, teach them their morals, give, keep them uh, involved with these teachings, with the circles, with the chantings. By playing the zikr in home and everybody coming together and reciting and chanting and, and building that bond with the children, inshaAllah and, and teaching. And the, the younger ages is the easiest because it's based on love, it's not, that's not the difficult part. So when you build that love and build that connection, by the time they're 15, 14, they're not going to go to Islamic school anyways. So they're, they're going to go into whatever public school system they have and they're going to do their own thing anyways. But it's the foundation in which you build them hopefully was strong enough and understanding enough that, no, no we don't do that and we don't do this and this is our belief system and this the shaykh we have, this is the guidance we have and the abundance of light that entering into their heart and dressing them every weekend, every weekend as, as negativities are dressing them, they have to be dressed and recharged by the zikrs. So that was the importance of all the energy trainings and the understanding of energy. When all day long they're going into negative environments, then by Thursday when they sit and say, come sit and do the zikr with us when they're young, they do. They all sit together, families, this is their entertainment. Make it entertaining, put some of their favorite candies, say, we're gonna put the candies in the middle to do the zikr, we're gonna put this refreshments and it become like an entertainment, we're gonna do the zikr and then many families after the zikr talk about what was talked about and you know you have to, you have to put time and effort into raising your family and as a result they have a, a foundation like building a house, you built it on concrete. So by the time somebody else is continuously trying to reprogram, they're pretty much like concrete. So and then that phase of life Prophet described then you have to be their friend because as they get older they're now going to take their courses in life in whatever direction Allah has written for them and the tests that they're going to take and you know everyone's going to make many bad choices as, as all of us made bad choices but we got here. Allah saved us, inshaAllah save their lives and, and, and grant them a najat and that's through the friendship, right? They're going to do things that the parents are not going to like but it's the friendship that's a rope to their heart. So that at any time they can reach out to you in their time of need and in their time of confusion. If you follow certain philosophies where they shut the door, say, I disown you, want nothing to do with you, you cut that rope and there's no way back to you. And Prophet didn't give this as, a, as an example. And the tariqahs, their, 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 what's their, their logos, come, come, if you, brought your, if you broke your vow a thousand times, still come again. So the shaykh's teachings are even teaching, don't ever shut the door to people that you, you're not 
in the tariqah anymore. You can say the character that you're exhibiting, you have to clean it, but keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Fix yourself, clean yourself, be appropriate and tariqah is available to you. So you, you never shut that door to the best of your ability and you try to keep that relationship always with the friendship so that there's always a way back to that salvation, to that love and to that respect. So that's, that's important in these days inshaAllah. But that is the great struggle, that's why we do what we do, the charity that people give, the activities that they go out and feed, they're trying to build their accounts extraordinarily large with Allah because this is the time to make your, your bargain before Allah begins to collapse. Once it begins to collapse there's no more giving, there's no more nothing. Don't think you're going to wait till you see uh, you know Armageddon and then you're going to make a donation. Nothing, nothing is needed at that time. Allah is describing, no that's over with. You have to make your bargain now, you have to make your, your commitments now, you have to make your involvement now because by the time you see it, it's finished. Everything's already collapsing and, and, and people are going to have what they have and have the amal and action and faith that they have and then they go through those types of hardships. But uh, yeah, that's the importance of people being committed and involved and participating so that to take away difficulties and Allah gives an exchange faith, gives an exchange good actions, good deeds. So that's the whole process of keeping your faith alive and faith in action. That's why everyone's being uh, advised that put your faith into action, you know, don't tell us you believe but show it, show it with your actions and your involvement so that Allah puts within the hisab of that person these, these barakahs, these blessings to save them from these events. Every day you wake up and they did something new, they've attacked new countries and they, they have a very aggressive game plan for difficulties that they want to inflict upon this earth. So people just have to wake up and look around and keep investigating and then they believe. And as a result they should take actions based on their belief in which to fortify their belief and build their belief and the build the belief of the family inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi if we were cut from our parents' madad as a child and was attacked constantly which led to a hard heart, how can we deprogram to reprogram as you say? Yeah, we don't want to go into each individual mm. case of somebody is going to say something about their mother, their father and everything in the world was wrong. But whatever happened is written that it happened and Allah has us in this school to understand what muhabbat is. So they try to reprogram themselves by loving the teacher, loving the teachings. Many people were even abused in their religious understanding and as a result Allah guided them to the tariqahs and they said, I've never heard this type of Islam. And again that's guidance, Allah guides them so that to empty your heart and bring that love, bring this teaching, bring the love of Prophet and then anything that you learned of any type of bad character that you pray to Allah don't make me like that and let me to be a better person, a better parent and to exhibit more love and, and more kindness and break the cycle of abuse, break the cycle of bad character and that that's not Islam. So that's the, the, the whole understanding. So when somebody is not good with their spouse, their children are watching and that's abuse because you now destroy the lives of those children, they're going to grow up and they're going to do the same type of badness on their spouse and, and that's where you're accountable in the grave. You know, you think, oh it doesn't matter it's this spouse and this spouse we're going to do what we want. No, you're not going to do what you want, you're now ruining the lives of those children and as a result when you die and go in the grave your vision will be what they're doing to their spouses and the torment that they inflict upon their homes and their children and the pattern of abuse keeps continuing. The reason Allah guided was to change everything. 
So this is not a, you know, very easy path that uh, we described that uh, this is a path in which Allah wants the, the wreckage of the past to be cleaned. That's why He's guiding. Don't do what they did. I'm guiding you to a way of perfection and the way in which Prophet has a love and admiration. So then you, you understand from these teachings that I have to be loving, I have to be kind, I have to be good, I have to try my best to always be just and fair so that my children always see that it's just and fair and that I have good manners and, and good character always to the best of our ability and then work with the children and, and, and communicate with the children and so this is our huge responsibilities. Once we bring people into this world we're responsible for them, it's a huge responsibility. That becomes its own torment in this world and in the hereafter. So people whom pass away their emotions are still connected to them. If they see the difficulties of their children well, that's their own form of jahannam. Right? If you're freed from the grave and Allah allows you to walk the earth and you're walking the earth is just looking at your children and the sort of tormented lives they've opened for themselves, well that's a form of jahannam for you. You're not going to be in a pleasurable experience thinking, I'm free from punishment, this is great. But you're going to be going and visiting all your loved ones which are your children and their families and their homes. And then you'll see what you did and how you raised them and the character you had and the effect it had upon them because they're the fruits of your tree. So yeah, there's a lot of accountability. That's why we said we're ambassadors for a much greater understanding. Allah guided us to clean yourself, perfect yourself, perfect your relationships. That when you left this earth your ummah was your family, your children understood love and compassion, the love of Prophet and didn't have to necessarily accept it. But they heard it from you, they saw it in your belief, they saw it in everything that you did. And at some point in time they may say, oh I'm going to go back to what my dad was doing or my mom was doing. So these are very important uh, path when people take a hisab of their homes and, and what they're doing and how they're raising their spouses, how they act with their spouses, how they act with their children. Is it based on love and compassion? And do you think if Prophet was right now in your living room or always in your living room, he would be pleased with you? The way you conduct yourself and conduct yourself with your spouse and your children. Because some people think that Sufism is only here on Thursday night. Then they go home, they're like, what is it, gremlins? <laughs> yeah, you have to think that Prophet is in your living room at all times watching everything and that he's looking at the character and, and looking at the example and that's the life of somebody who's entering sincerity because they, they feel a sense of, of, yes he is watching me. And I have to act better and if the other person is, is, is uh, not acting good at least my good character he'll be pleased with me. I can't make him sallallahu pleased with everyone in the house because that's not my business. I'm only hoping that if he's sitting there on the couch he's pleased with me because I'm going to go into my grave. Each kid will have their own grave, the other spouse will have their own grave and they're all going to have their own accounting. So it's just if I worry about him being pleased with me and not who's right and wrong in any argument then you should have a good outcome because he comes into the environment, he's pleased with you and that's all that we needed. And if everyone thought like that then you would, it would be like a paradise everywhere you go. So that's, so that's what the whole concept of sincerity. When people are sincere they have a, a very sort of close relationship with the Divine and they're continuously conscious of that and remorseful. When they don't make it, they don't do it right and they have regret and they immediately try to correct their errors. They're not sort of prideful of their error and saying, oh it's great to be like that. No, regretful, crying, trying to fix things because they don't want the, the, the Divinely station to be upset. So that's, that's the abode of sincerity that we have to move in that direction 
I think that they're always watching us, that they're present with us. We're people who do madad and, and meditate and contemplate, inshaAllah. Oh, as salaamu alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, recently there is news that the earth's core has stopped and is spinning in the opposite way. Does this have any spiritual reality to Imam Mahdi alayhi salam? Spiritual reality to Imam Mahdi <laughs> salam, yeah. yeah, I know that the, the earth's core has to do with energy, right? So your energy and your energy field has to do with your heart. So your energy that you're building produces a, a nazma, a aura, whatever people want to say. So what you see on the outside, remember, goes back to what you all understand inside. When people say, oh what's this aura stuff, this doesn't exist, so go and study the earth. The core of the earth is a, is a flow of heat and energy. That energy inside the earth is producing all of these, what are these ozone layers and all, all of this energy that, that protects the earth. It, it uh, what are the seven la layers of the, of the ozone for the earth? All of the protection of the earth is based on the core. When the core heat and core elements are providing an energy field that shields the earth from any sort of outside attack and, and asteroids coming. Very difficult to penetrate this, this atmosphere that the earth is producing from its core. So that has a, a great understanding for the, the core of an insan when their heart is strong, their energy is strong, they produce an immense amount of protection. When your core is dead, what happens? You're being attacked from every possible angle and just continuous attack. So the whole of these practices is the building of the core, building of the energy. So the, the shifting of, of the core and, and shifting of the earth's core has to do with the sun rising from the west. There will be a break in the polarity of the earth in which a complete shift and that we'll see the sun rise from the west. So we said that when Prophet described that the sun will rise from the west, before the physical event you're now seeing the spiritual. So spiritual realities are rising from the west, not from east. East is already Maghrib time, they're you know that, that left, that set on them and this is the hadith of Prophet that the Ishraqiyoon and these realities and knowledges would rise from the west, not from the east. That's why you don't really see anything coming out of the east. So everything of realities and haqqaiqs will be coming out of the west. So that's the spiritual. When we start seeing all of those realities coming out, then expect now the physical where it'll collapse and the polarity of the earth shift and tidal waves and earthquakes and and everything imaginable. So we already see the spiritual aspect of it. So it's just a matter of moments that the physical comes and the shift of that polarity, inshaAllah. Mm -hmm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, if the Dajjal is a jinn in a form of AI, could an immense solar flare be Imam Mahdi shutting down all electronics? Many fear around and about an EMP which is impossible to accomplish by humans. No, what, you should listen to the other talk that we gave before. The, the, the Dajjal is not AI, the Dajjal is a jinn, a jinn who's in the form of a human going to walk on this earth. And that the AIs are all jinn and they all work for him. And Imam Mahdi Salam is a physical representative of the family of Prophet and that he will give a takbir and in four takbirs and in one takbir he'll shut off all energy. With his energy he'll shut off all electronics and we described that the night before. His takbir is enough to create that pulse outside of the atmosphere of the earth that will shut down all chips. All of these electronics will shut down. So right now they're being inspired to put chips in everything, chips in your milk carton, chips everything. 
so that he can give his takbir to shut it down. Because they plan all the plans better, all this inspiring, they put it in everything because I'm going to shut it all down. And so they got a jinn in every one of them because their house is in silicone. And we described in that whole talk, they, the, the computer guys are the most aggressive. What are you talking about, man? Jinn and silicone, do you get your information from? They don't, they don't have any understanding. So their life is a silica-based creation, we're carbon-based creation. As a result of their silica creation and they have no form, how many billions can you put on one chip, right? And then when they go back to the science of these chips, they actually look like little sitting, city planning. They look like buildings with roads and they go to this structure, that structure and then they say, oh there's like three billion bits of information in here. So exactly what I said, it's billions of these jinn are living there, based out of there because it's a silica creation so it means their energy can reside in that area. And as a result they're the ones whom facilitating that technology on that device. So that, that's their, their world. They're all on these machines, they're the ones sending your information, retrieving your information. Like the kingdom of Sayyidina Sulaiman when the freed said, eh, we'll bring it, it takes a moment. And they're still doing that. But the people of the book, they had the ability to bring it in the speed of thought. So their power is something much higher, much stronger. So we don't want to take from the jinn energy, we want to take from the people of the book. Whom they learned the book, they talked the book and Allah called them Rabbaniyoon. So be Rabbaniyoon, who you learned the book of Allah and you taught the book of Allah Then they describe, well the kitab of Allah its reality is really Sayyidina Muhammad He's walking Qur'an. So as you're reading Qur'an and have a reverence, you have to have the love of Sayyidina Muhammad because he's the actual walking Qur'an. So he will bring out all the power of Holy Qur'an and that really becomes the kitab of Allah Right now it's Furqan, it's uh, ink on paper. But when the Rasulullah comes and his ruhaniyat and his light comes, then that's the Qur'an. That when you read it and his presence is there, he activates it. And that has immense power, immense power. If it can bring the dead to life, it's this Qur'an. If it can move a mountain, it's this Qur'an. It's not the Furqan that they read, but the presence of Prophet is the encryption key, right? So now we know these uh, cold storage wallets, right? You have to have that key there. Prophet is that key. Everyone thinks they, they have all the secrets, no, you're, you're, re you're reading Furqan, right and wrong. But Qur'an is only activated by the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And then the higher level within the heart of Prophet is Ummul Kitab, the mother of all books. So the location of Ummul Kitab is where? Is in the paradises, in the light and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad so from Ummul Kitab is then coming down into Qur'an and that has to be with the connection and the love of Prophet so that you have that key with you and it unlocks all the treasures of Allah inshaAllah. Yes, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said What do we say to people who say, we do too much mawlid? 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Can you, can you do too much praising upon Allah Because what do you mean by mawlid? The mawlid is the celebration of Allah And nobody's doing 24-7 of the milad. You know that would be a very high station. So to have the, the love for Allah and the love and reverence for Sayyidina Muhammad is the dhikr of Allah It's the order of Allah in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi So when does that end? 
and when does it begin? So when Allah says, Yusalluna ala nabi, do you think Allah stops? And then Allah has like a clock, I do this only Thursdays. And then when the command came that, in Allahi wa malaikatuhu, do you think the angels stop that command? So the dhikr of Allah and the dhikr of the angels is Yusalluna ala nabi So that is the eternal source of all power. As Allah is making that dhikr, as, as the angels are following, that is the power of resonance. So if those people that their shallow understanding go back into the science that how is your form existing? Your form is existing when you break it down to your atoms, to your lights, to energy. Your energy is existing from a hamd and a praise. What praise is that that is keeping you in existence? And the books and the planets and the galaxies and the universes, they're in existence by a frequency. So that's what people they have to understand science is when they don't like these talks and you know like very backwards uneducated because they don't understand anything from science and that's the, that's the danger. Some they go only to certain schools of dogma but they never even went to a school for science. If you go into a school, a regular school in which you educate yourself and you, you know even basic sciences now, anything that is in front of you is a form and this has a molecular and atomic reality. And they look with their microscope and they say, okay, this is, breaks down to atoms. And these atoms, they broke it down again with microscopes and they saw it to be lights. And they broke it down again and said, these lights and quarks, they're actually sounds and string theory. And this is the whole study of what's called quantum mechanics, quantum theory. That this is not sitting here as a form. This is a light, atoms moving at a very high speed giving the appearance of something solid but it's actually all lights. And they said for these lights to be here there's an energy. This energy has to be based on resonance and, and movement. And Allah said in Qur'an, yes, Yusabbihu wa bihamdi, for verily everything has a praise but none know it but the people of tafakkur. So it means that's usually people have to have some sort of education, they have to have gone to some schooling and then they understand, oh shaykh is talking about science, teaching you about Qur'an and science. The science of, of realities, not false sciences and, and hypothesis, but the science of realities that were inspired by awliya to these people to understand quantum is based to study on light and malakut. And Allah has throughout Qur'an established the malakut and the world of light is far more superior than the world of form. And the world of light allows the existence of the world of form, right? No inside, no out. If your atoms are not there, there's no form. If your lights are not there, there's no form. So the study of the light is more superior than the study of the form. So that's why when they understood everything is making a sound and manifesting, what sound was that? Right? In Allahi wa malaikatuhu. Because it's only zikr Allah described in Qur'an, In Allahi wa malaikatuhu. That was enough for Allah to say, that's it, Yusalluna ala nabi. Then if you want you can join but he didn't care because you're not any of any, any importance to make any power. Is Allah is making the power and the angels are saying, Ameen and pushing all their power on that power and that becomes the whole power of manifestation. And what is the zikr that we make and the, and the salawat that we make that people made that kind of a comment? When you want to praise upon Prophet and what do you say, Allahumma, but you said, Allahumma, so you're praising Allah So. That means that you know you th you, people say these kind of things but they're coming against Allah. That's that you have to be very careful. This is praising Allah 
And Allah says, I only created you to worship me, not to buy car, not to buy house, not to even buy food. There are servants of Allah that they open a rock and there's a little servant in there making zikr of Allah So Allah has servants in Taskatul Awliya. They have stories that we thought he was the best of worshippers. He says, no, 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 you're not the best of him, I have one really nice one. And he went to an area and they said, this rock over there, crack that rock open. And they cracked the rock open and was in there a little man with a tasbih going, Allah, 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 Allah. He looked at him, SubhanAllah, how he didn't even have a source for food. And they're sitting there praising Allah and they understood that when Allah said, I only created you to worship me. It wasn't about you getting cars and homes and money and cash and all these things that you want, I'm allowing that. But I only created you to worship me. So these are the immense haqqaiqs and realities that you know you can worship Allah in all these beatific ways and Allah is so happy He sends you all of these things. He sends you this money, this food, this abundance. Look we put out the truck and Allah fills it. Where that comes from? You saw that truck with the old crab legs, <laughs> like $30 things that if you go to a restaurant you, you have to spend maybe two, three hundred dollars to order these things and get some fancy to throw the salt on it. <laughs> Allah sent it for free into the trucks, said, take all you want. You want electronics too? Take all these cabinets, all these lights, <laughs> everything they're putting into these trucks. Yeah, because Allah's happy, praise me, thank me, I give you more. Yeah, not go, don't know, question praising me, go out and work and, and make some cash. No, Allah said, said, praise me, thank me, I give you more. So the tariqahs are strong in their belief and they, they teach these secrets. Praise Allah praise whom Allah loves. And, and do the things that Allah loves and the rest Allah throws at you the, the bounty of dunya. So there's no need to, to, to be worried. But the ones whom don't do these things they're always in difficulty and that's what's sad. So follow the tariqah, follow the shaykhs and, and uh, inshaAllah your life get better, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, we accept by a tongue that we are nothing, but what can we do with thoughts that run through our mind saying that we are something? <laughs> yeah, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> Probably asked by somebody who has like a hidden name on YouTube because <laughs> nobody, nobody will say that. But that's uh, yeah, that's your nafs and nafs of everyone says that, I fully agree that that's your whole fight is that I'm nothing and everything is geared to say you are something, right? So as soon as you meditate, even Imam Ali said, annihilate yourself in your annihilation. Means that those are for the people of Ulul Albab that they'll be training in being nothing because they're the gatekeepers with the sword, right? So the Ulul Bab. The people of the gate, they'll teach you how to lose your head and meditate. As a result, they continuously remind you that this meditation and, and this way is very powerful. Don't be distracted for a moment that with all the, the bounty and all the blessings come to you, don't let it get to your head. So this is continuous, continuous in all our lives that uh, the bounty of Allah the blessings of Allah that you want it to continuously flow so that you're always reinvesting it, always pushing it back, always giving, 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 giving because you want Allah to continuously send that sort of flow of blessings. So when the one says, oh I, I know everything then there's no more sending. But you keep telling uh, everyone, I don't know, know anything. Ya Rabbi, I don't know anything because I don't compare to an ocean of Allah it's not even a drop. So how can anyone claim anything? So whatever they have you say, I have nothing Ya Rabbi, from whatever you gave to me it's nothing. So we have to remind ourselves that we're nothing. And if in your visions and meditations 
your nafs wants to start showing you stations and maqams and heavenly gifts, you negate it and say, that's not what I came for. I came to be nothing out of it, I want to reach to your ocean of power. And I see only around me is an ocean of light like lightning that just annihilate me into nothing but energy. No images of, of jubbas and, and gifts and crowns and, and all of these things, I came just to reach to energy and be nothing. They see themselves in an in a ocean of light, walking into that light and disappearing. And uh, an energy of lightning just hitting and, and everywhere becoming that lightning. So you lose the form, lose the identity and, and lose the self and continuous throughout the day, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And before you, you deal with people you say, I'm nothing to yourself and alhamdulillah. So it's a continuous battle against the self. And Prophet described, don't leave me for a blink of an eye, Ya Rabbi, against with my nafs. So if the Prophet is saying blink of an eye then we have like even fractions of a blink. Don't let that happen. So that's the struggle inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, could you tell us more about the attributes that Mulana Shah Naqshaband and Mulana Salman al Farsi dress the soul when we have an immense, immense love for them? Imam Salman al Farsi, we didn't even mention that. He added it. Yeah, I added that in there. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, they they have to address that. That what what, what is the dress with the immense love? So when we love them, and with our good deeds and good actions, we draw near to them, and as a result, they dress the soul from its realities and its blessings. Inshallah. And that, that is the whole way. So tonight is for Imam Ali this weekend inshaAllah is his uh, significance of Imam Ali Salam. So we have to ask ourselves that with that immense love that the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and the importance of the holy ring and that that ring represents uh, Imam Ali Salam. And the importance of the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad is the importance of the Sahabi, Sahabi kiram, the honoured and, and noble companions of Prophet That this is an immense reality and a gift and this is their khidmat to the nation and to the creation that Allah is bringing and has brought into existence. That their, their love for Prophet is this whole station of love. That we love him so much that our eternal khidmat is to accompany his holy sunnah because we can find no better joy than people whom keep the way of Sayyidina Muhammad alive. So, oh big awliyaullah, one of their titles was Muhiya Sunnah, the revivers of the sunnah. So Mawlana Shaykh Nazim was one big huge Muhiya Sunnah, right? a reviver of the sunnah. So all over the world people know Shaykh Nazim students. You go into an aer airport in Europe and they got the hat, they got the beard, they got the sunnah clothes and people say, oh Shaykh Nazim people, why? And those same people when they would go to the Arabs they say, why you look like that? Right? Because they were leaving the sunnah. The, they want to build their skyscrapers and, and wear, you know, ten thousand dollar suits. So when they would see the sunnah they say, why you look like that? Because we said the east left it and he brought it to the west. So he went into all of Europe with this sunnah and they were like, ajee, what is that? And they were grabbing it, they were eating it, right? The Muslims were selling it and the western people were buying it. So we went even here to Kaaba place, remember? So why you all look like that like ten years ago? And they told him, yeah, you, you sold your religion, we bought it. You wanted to look like the Western people, you, you, you took your religion off and, and sold it, they bought it from you. It's exactly like a bargain, right? People came all religious, said, ah, I want to take this off. Well, those Western people said, this look great this fashion and they put it all on. 
And now when you come in front of them they say, why you look like that? Means then that was a great reviver and is still, his inspirations are great. Reviving the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad upon this earth. Why? Because the ajr that every time you keep a sunnah of Prophet that Allah grants you the ajr, the reward of 70 martyrs, not one, 70 martyrs. Yes, it's immense. How much Allah loves Prophet the game is rigged in our favour immensely that you can't imagine it. Why? Because of his love for Sayyidina Muhammad I want to make your nation like kings where all the other ones they are going to be just common creation, I'm going to make your nation like kings because I'm going to give so many rewards for them. So imagine now those whom loved him the most, holy companions, they attach themselves to the holy sunnahs. I say, if they carry this sunnah, Ya Rabbi let my, my being to be with them and accompany them. So whom represents that power and that immense might that Prophet would send to help the nation of Sayyidina Sulaiman against the shayateen and ifrit, the same one that Prophet sent in his time. That these ifrit and shayateen on the moon are attacking the earth and he sent Imam Ali and his ruhaniyat to go and fight them and to keep them at bay. Not only physical warrior, he's immensely spiritual warrior. And he was doing many things for Prophet in the spiritual realm. And that same ring was given to Sayyidina Sulaiman when he asked from Allah I want something as a protection, these shayateen and afrid are attacking my nation. That they had come down and come into the earth as a full-fledged attack upon the earth and upon his nation. And Allah answered his prayer and gave him from the ring and the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's when we talked before, it was all in the ring because when Allah took His ring the power was taken. Means that everything was coming in that ring, that ring's power is from what? The presence of Imam Ali with the nation of Sayyidina Sulaiman Sulaimaniyyah. So that ring, what well, a ring has no power, it's just stone in the middle. But if Asadullah al Qalib is attached to it, that had power to command the shayateen to be down and to be fearful, and that all the jinn to serve and the angels to serve by the presence and the izzah and might that Allah put into the spirituality of Imam Ali to be present with that nation and to support Sayyidina Sulaiman And that's why he said, the power of Sayyidina Sulaiman is a drop within the power of Sayyidina Muhammad Because he had to give his sunnahs to other prophets for them to have power. In his holy presence he is the power. Hmm? For Nabi Musa to part the sea he gives Sayyidina Abu Bakr with a cane. It says, nation of Sayyidina Musa uses a cane with the ruhaniyat of Sayyidina Abu, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as salam to part the sea. But in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad he is the power of Allah Because the king now has all of his, his kingdom items with him and all his holy companions in their physicality present with him. So it's an immense nation, immensely powerful realities, immensely blessed realities. And that is the kingdom of God that their prayers that Sayyidina Isa was teaching them that one is coming, my father who is in heaven is coming onto this earth. Holy is his name, his kingdom will come and his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven, who he was describing? Sayyidina Muhammad Why he doesn't make shirk to think he's from Allah? You think Sayyidina Isa made a mistake and was calling upon Allah and teaching people that to make shirk with Allah 
Now Allah just says such a word is so blasphemous the throne shakes. So Ruhullahum is, is the purity of, of the light of Allah's realities. He was describing to his nations as coming, my father is coming onto this earth. Holy is his name, Mahmud, Ahmad, Muhammad. His kingdom is coming. Because he, when he would talk of Sayyidina Muhammad to his companions, Nabi Ahmad. Nabi Ahmad from the highest realm, not Nabi Muhammad Nabi Ahmad is the one whom sits upon the throne because he has the alif and the ham. So he was telling his companions this du'a that my father is coming and his name very holy, his kingdom is coming and his will will be done on this earth. And then Prophet arrived with the kingdom came with all its might, all his holy companions and they're the embodiment of all these realities throughout history. So yeah, it's, it's immense, immense realities that as Qalib inshaAllah anyone whom revives the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and carries the holy ring with that ishq and that reverence and that love, that the madad and support and the ishq of Imam Ali salam to be with them, to support them, to help them. Ya Rabbi as you helped the nation of Sayyidina Sulaiman salam from every type of shayateen, every type of ifrit, every type of magic, every type of sir, that grant us that support. And the one whom wears that sunnah loves that sunnah for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad Alhamdulillah they get the madad and the support of Imam Ali And that's a Sadallah al-Qalib and that their allegiance is to the heaven, the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad and that they wear the sunnah ring as a ring of allegiance. Their allegiance is not to any, any person on this earth, their allegiance is to the heavens Allah to La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah So has immense, the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad immensely loaded, immensely powerful. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with more and more understanding of the immense barakah and blessings that Allah sends to the nation inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon. Assalamu alaikum mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.